Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is a, uh, is a preview, a first look at Corpse Kings. So uh, about two or three days ago, uh, Wade Savage, the author of this uh, RPG, reached out to me on Twitter and uh, asked if I would be interested in uh, taking a look at his game and uh, so I said sure just send me a you know send me a PDF and I will gladly take a look at it and uh, you know might even do a first look and flip through or page through on my uh, on my channel and he was like that would be awesome and so here we are so um, I'm not going to dig deep dive into every aspect of this I'm going to basically just do a first look and a flip through of um, of just what the game has to offer and then I will um, then I will start doing uh, reviews of several of its uh, chapters much more focused so without further ado let's take a look at Corpse Kings <clears throat> so here we have uh, Corpse Kings, and this is put out by uh, Strange Glass Games. And this is the version 1.0, October 1st of October uh, of 2023. So you get uh, you get something that is very very new, hot off the press, basically two days later. Um, all of the text and writing and design are done by Wade K. Savage. All of the art is AI, so um, it comes straight out up front and says there is AI art here, which I don't have a problem with for, um, I don't have a problem with AI art when the creator comes out and they say, this is AI art. It's only a problem when they try to deny that they use AI art and it becomes very obvious that they did. All right, I'm... Talking about you, Wizards of the Coast. So anyway, we go here and we go to the contents. Now the other thing I, by the time I got to the contents page, looking at this, um, I realized suddenly that hey, this is landscape, you know, uh, presentation of it. So that's something that's a little bit different. Uh, you don't often see landscape uh, layout. So uh, it doesn't have the hypertext or um, you know, linked uh, contents pages, which I do prefer. And, uh, but very nice AI art. I mean, it, this stuff is very, um, it's kind of grim and dark. So he did a very good job of selecting the pieces that he would use. So Corpse Kings is a tabletop role-playing game using a simple D6 and D20 custom dice system. The game is designed to provide players with a rules light experience that is focused on intrigue, dread, and adventure, um, which is cool because it's it's kind of a it's kind of a theme that you don't often see. All right, so intrigue, dread, and adventure. Um, I mean, you could say that's what Call of Cthulhu is as well, uh, but this is an eldritch horror. This is classic horror. At least that's where I'm, you know, that's where I, it takes me to thinking about. Players take on the roles of inhabitants of the dead city of Nazai, vying for power and survival in a world of dark fantasy. The game's rules are streamlined to allow for easy storytelling and immersive gameplay, emphasizing exploration and interaction over complex rules and mechanics. Make the difficulty and tone suit your tastes. Change whatever you want. It's your game. So a good rule zero there. Uh, Got to focus a little bit harder. In Corpse Kings, gameplay centers around navigating the complex web of factions and alliances within the city of Nazai. Or Nazai. Um... In addition to the political intrigue of Nazai, in the future players will have all uh, will also have the opportunity to explore other worlds and dimensions. The Corpse Kings demand the destruction of rival gods, and it's up to the players to journey to these other worlds and carry out 
these divine assassinations. Once again, a totally unique gameplay model here. All right. So, um, and that's something that I have not seen before. Players will need to gather information and allies, as well as acquire the necessary tools and equipment for their mission. Once on these other worlds, they must adapt to unfamiliar terrain and deadly foes, all while carrying out the will of the Corpse Kings. Combat in Corpse Kings is deadly and unforgiving. Players must use every advantage at their disposal, from magical spells to brutal melee combat to overcome their enemies. The simple and custom rule set provides a framework for this lethal combat with emphasis on quick, brutal action that keeps the pace of the game fast and intense. As players explore the depths of Nazai and beyond, they will encounter strange and exotic creatures from undead abominations to interdimensional horrors. They will need to use all of their wits and resources to survive and thrive in the dangerous world. Only the strongest, cleverest, and most ruthless will be able to rise to the top and earn favor of the Corpse Kings. So here we have some more AI art. You can kind of tell when you have these like very, very strange distortions. Uh, so what are the core attributes? And this I absolutely love because rules light means that, you know, you do not necessarily need the six attribute build, right? So here we have body, mind, spirit, and soul. And really good selection uh, that kind of tells you how well attached this is to the theme of the game, right? So your body attribute represents your physical prowess, strength, and endurance of the character. Very straightforward. Your mind attribute embodies intelligence, wit, and mental acuity. Characters with high mind scores are quick thinkers, strategists, and adapt at solving problems. Adept, I'm sorry. Uh, deciphering ancient scripts and recalling lore from forgotten tombs. Or tomes, tomes. Spirit. The spirit attribute reflects a character's willpower, determination, and mental fortitude. A strong spirit allows characters to resist mind-altering effects, maintain concentration during intense situations, and bolster their allies with inspiring speeches or leadership. Paladins, clerics, and charismatic individuals devote their efforts to raising their spirit attribute to become natural leaders and stalwart protectors. Soul. The soul attribute delves into a character's connection to the, myth to the mystical and metaphysical forces of the world. It embodies their spiritual essence, empathy, and understanding of the life force that binds all living beings. Characters with high soul score have a natural affinity for healing, communication with spirits, and unlocking the potential of enhanced items. Uh, enchanted items, sorry. So, uh, first time reading through these, so I apologize for that. I uh, wouldn't be unscripted if it wasn't for that. What are the skills? All right, so in Corpse King, Kings, each skill is a specialized move. Hone through lethal blend of natural talents and relentless training. Skills are how we implement any action in the game. One such exemplar is the bone-chilling, shattering skull crusher, a formidable skill attained by those graced with high body attribute. Unveiling the shattering skull crusher, as the warrior's journey through Corpse Kings progresses, they take the elusive shattering skull crusher skill, a move uniquely attuned to their body's attribute. This skill channels the raw strength and power of their mighty physique into a fearsome bone crushing attack. Skill activation and attribute test to unleash the dreaded 
Shattering Skull Crusher, the warrior must first prove their mettle. The player rolls a d20 and endeavors to achieve the result of 18 or under their current body attribute score. This roll uh, signifies the warrior's proficiency and result to execute the move with deadly precision. Impact Assessment Success in the attribute test fuels the warrior with adrenaline and determination setting the stage for the impending strike. Once the body attribute roll is victorious, the player rolls a d6 to assess the impact of Shattering Skull Crusher. The d6 roll determines the potency of the attack with higher results translating to more devastating and bone shattering blow. Both skills and spells require specific core attribute skills, but high level skills will include bonuses to damage and special effects. For example, Shatter Skull Crusher is a skill that requires at least 18 body. The two hit for this skill is also 18. That requires the core attributes to succeed is identified with a, and then there's like a box thing there. Um, once the player has succeeded their attribute check, they roll a d6 to determine the impact of the assessment. Uh, what changes from here are modifiers from weapons, spells, potions, and items. These modifiers can affect both the core attribute and your impact assessment score. Impact assessment scores are six descriptors of how your action has succeeded, specific to the skill, weapon, item, or potion. Higher numbers are always an indicate incredible outcomes whilst a one indicates failure or an action blowing back at the player. This level of randomization keeps gameplay fun, erratic, and quick moving. In the next couple of pages, let's explore exactly how the round of combat goes. I'm not going to go into that in this video. The complete list of skills is on page 180. So let's see what we go into. And next we're going to go into combat. So I'm going to save combat for later. And I am going to, well, like as I described, a 6 is a devastating annihilation. And a 1 is unwanted recoil. All right, so they give you the two extremes on that. Uh, but let's let's further oh, let's further just scroll through this and show you um, the sections that we go into. We go into what looks like the lore. All right, and uh, more of this art, full page art, the Black Tower. Uh, so we're still doing a. A lore chapter here, the central city, and there you can see the imagery. It's a very, very dark. The districts, this is Anise Huxley, the Venerable. Head librarian of the Library of the Arcane. Okay, she doesn't look very venerable. <laughs> she looks pretty darn young, but uh, maybe there's something behind why she looks so young. Um, she's probably using some kind of dark magic. Uh, let's see, this is uh, Ninwise's weapon shop. All right, so uh, this is a blacksmith. Uh, yes, so he is a blacksmith. The only mark of quality on a weapon is how it kills, nothing more. Okay, it says pricing, reinforced armor plates, uh, plating is a plus two AP. One item is 200 crowns. Iron spikes added to armor, one damage. All right, um, I guess when you roll a D6, you add one to it. And that is uh, 150 crowns. 
I, I think he should question the hold that he has on this weapon. Um, he's probably cutting his hand here. Uh, there's his shop, I'm assuming. So let's see who else we have. We have food and wine of the Fangs. I'm guessing the Fangs is a tavern. Uh, I would not be eating in this place if that was the cook. Uh, here's the menu. Garlic-free toast, bread. All right, I got it. All right, roasted cherry glazed pork, fried eels and vegetables, and nightshade cheesecake. Interesting. Uh, this is our George's Augusta Undead Manager. Vampire Seamstress. Okay. She appears to embroider um, silk and clothing and such. <coughs> Probably to give you added AP. Yeah, so um, plus one AP, uh, plus one to IA, one item. Uh, so take a look at that. We'll, we'll get into more detail uh, later on. So let's see. I like the characters. This is a werewolf sentinel. This is an undead chemist. Uh, I was checking to see if they're the same version of, uh, of the character on the uh, shelf. Uh, here is the Wrath's Rest, uh, the Wraith's Rest, so another tavern, I'm guessing. These images here you could probably use as, you know, if you kind of cut and paste it, and uh, you could probably use this as a uh, VTT battle map. Uh, just stretch it out a bit, and you could drop your icons on it, and you can turn this into a battle map. I don't know if that's the intention. Uh, here we have another... Vampire Songstress, Viola. All right. Um, maybe she's like a bard. Or like a siren, but as a vampire. Um, undead Emissary. I don't know who this young guy is. Uh, looks almost like a young Mark Hamill. So, uh, maybe he represents that. Oh, so here we have a character sheet. And uh, so name, XP pool, level, age, gender, being, class, um, crowns, body, mind, spirit, and soul with their modifiers. You have your skills. Doesn't look like there's that many skills that you need. Gear. Um, so pretty cool looking stuff. Uh, starting out, again, that'll be a whole different, um, that'll be a whole different video, I'm sure. So here are vampires, here are undead, these I guess are your playable races, these are Dracari, I'll go, it's like a demon, it looks like, a rare breed of demon. This is a... A Gorgulia. All right. Um, so unique race. A Wolfen. All right. So that's your. The unnatural. Human beings born in. Uh, Nazai. Unique and often difficult experience growing up in the city dominated by supernaturals. These are regular humans. Wraiths and Naklapar are among the broken and decaying corners of the landscape live this unique and terrifying and these childlike creatures are known to be cannibals with a penchant for flesh and taste for blood. Yeah, they look pretty nasty looking. The worm chosen.
Rot whites, 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 rot whites. Pretty cool looking stuff. The classes, we have the Undead Sentinel, we have the Vampire Necromancer, we have the Rolf, uh, Wolfen, Wolven, um, I'll say Wolfen, Gravestalker. You have the uh, Duelist, the Barbarian, the Soul, Scribe Witch, Undead Alchemist, Reanimated Sorcerers, Blooded Blade Masters, Corpse Buyer Rogues. I would probably go with that because I love rogues or thieves. Gear. Go into a good selection. Wow, good selection of weapons. Uh, mostly images. Let me see if I can zoom in on... Oh, no. They don't. That's just for... That's just for the image sake. Um, projectiles. Shields. Magic items. This is 288 pages. So there seems to be, there's a lot in this. So this is going to take me a while to go through everything with you, but uh, certainly, um, certainly a lot of work went into this. I am going to go all the way to, let's see what the end is. Let my computer catch up. The conclusion, and there we go. So on Twitter, it is uh, Corpse Kings, TikTok and Discord. So there's a separate Discord channel for it. Um, I will also put out that uh, this is available. I'm going to switch views now. So this is available on uh, on Drive Through RPG. Uh, I believe it was on sale for fifteen dollars for this. Uh, 280 plus page uh, PDF um, so I do recommend that if you want to uh, take your own look at this uh, then you'll find it over there um, that's the one place that I know where it is at uh, so uh, it looks really cool I, I mean I like the fact that the dice mechanic is is a different kind of a dice mechanic I love the you know the idea of the four attributes I think it really does stick to its theme well all right uh, I mean everything just seems to work within that theme and so there's uh, you know the author uh, Wade Savage doesn't lose uh, doesn't lose where he was going with this you know and, and I think that's really important uh, for you know such a long document here uh, that's that's certainly something to look for is that you know the person doesn't lose sight of what the theme of the game actually is so um, love that so really looks cool um, the only downsides that I have and like I said initially uh, I don't mind that it has AI art there's just a lot of it here and you know that makes it a whole different calculation when you're in PDF only, and uh, at least at the moment it's at PDF only. I don't know if he has plans for this to come out in uh, a print on demand, but um, when you have that much ink, uh, it really does become a, um, you know, a cost modifier for printing it out, right? Um, I can imagine going in there and just printing the pages that actually have text on them and skipping over printing the um, skipping over printing the full page art uh, that's on there um, you know so that's that's one thing like I don't know if he has the ability to produce 
a print friendly um, where it's eliminating a lot of the art and just keeping or just like I suggested right putting out a version of it there without the full page art um, that's that's thrown in there because there was you know and I will switch back over um, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing but I mean some of these things like this page here is like a one two three even this is potentially not necessary four five six seven uh, you might want to keep this one in there um, eight nine ten I, I mean there's there's a lot of pages in here that are full page art that um, that your player isn't going to want to produce I know what these are like these are like the images that you have with like Tomb of Horrors and the handouts that you would show and everything so that the players would uh, would be able to see what you're describing but if you describe it well they won't need that um, you know so that's that's the thing that I would consider doing is um, is to have a, a separate PDF version that is a print friendly version that takes out some of those things um, or at least has the has all of the images that are supposed to be like handouts and and or or just um, things that you can show off in its own separate thing instead of scattered throughout the entire document and so that if I'm playing at a table and I have this downloaded on my iPad I can just show them those images as they come through all right um, and then that way they don't need a copy handed out to them and yet the text that I have either on my iPad or I have printed out is just the um, the, the core rule book uh, and and any introductory uh, adventure that might be in there as well so um, so plus side theme 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 all the way through looks really good a um, lot of work was put into this thing and um, and it looks like it's going to be a very interesting game system to run um, it appeals to me on you know on the grounds of it being a good uh, convention kind of game like a one-shot type of thing or even a, um, a, a, a campaign that breaks away from what we normally tend to do you know so it, it it looks like a, a, a good evil character campaign that you can run um, and certainly has a, a, a unique theme to it, which I, you know, can't say enough about. Um, the only downside is uh, in the PDF only format, it is uh, very, very ink intensive. And that's something that I've brought up with other game systems as well um, that, you know, very, very ink intensive PDFs, you know, the um, the creators have to be, you know, have to be expecting that some people will be like, that's just too much for me to print out. Uh, so either have a print on demand option if that's possible or a uh, print friendly option as well. So, uh, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. I will do a secondary video at least to go into the actual game mechanics, especially if you ask me to do that, I, um, you know, I do take, uh, I do take, uh, do take recommendations and suggestions on um, on follow up videos. So if there's something specific that you want me to go into, I certainly will. Uh, if I don't get that kind of feedback. I will at the very least go into and do a deeper dive into the game mechanics, which uh, he describes as being a very simple system to use. So certainly put that to the test. And then I will take a look at character creation and uh, in more detail, the character races and classes. So uh, as always, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
The remainder of my night is going to be spent uh, getting ready for and running my AD&D first edition campaign tonight. Uh, so looking forward to getting that done, uh, session 103 uh, of our weekly sessions. And, uh, and then uh, later on in the week, I will get back to... Uh, get back to doing some of the other things I have been covering. Um, probably try to squeeze in another Castles and Crusades. Uh, another Shadow Dark uh, video will come out next week. Uh, another one of these will certainly come out uh, later on in the, um, later on either this week or possibly on the weekend. I, I will do the combat for this. And, uh, and then as always, I take in your requests and such. So this is a perfect example of the thing that my channel is really meant to do. Um, content creators out there, you can reach out to me. Um, you know, I don't I don't ask for, uh, and I've never received actually free product in the mail. Um, you know, so physical copies or anything like that. Um, if this were a Kickstarter and I really liked what I was looking at, I would have I would have backed this. You know, so far it looks like it is something that I would have backed. Um, but uh, it's certainly nice to have someone reach out and say, "Hey, will you take a look at this?" And uh, here's the PDF, and I'm always open for that. I also extend the invitation to uh, to Wade Savage if he wants to come in on the channel and talk about the process that he went through uh, in creating this and, and why this theme really stood out to him. I would love to have that conversation with him. So the invitation is open. Uh, anytime you'd like to come in, uh, Wade, you'd be welcome to. And we can sit down and chat. Uh, every Thursday, I tend to, uh, every Thursday night, I tend to do a, uh, a live stream. Uh, although this Thursday, I actually have um, I actually have a funeral to go to this Thursday, so I don't know how much, uh, you know, how much time I'll actually have available to me Thursday in order to do that. Um, but we can always reschedule, uh, my live stream and, uh, and run it on either Friday or Saturday or something like that. So if you wanted to come in on that, you're certainly welcome to do so. So... Everyone else, uh, enjoy the rest of your week and, uh, you know, keep those dice rolling and uh, check out this game if you want. Uh, there's an affiliate link. You can jump in through my affiliate link that will take you directly to Drive Through RPG and then just type in uh, Corpse Kings and it will come up uh, or you can do Strange Glass, um, Strange Glass Press or uh, I'm sorry, it's right in front of me. Strange Glass Games, uh, so check them out that way as well. And uh, yeah, if you back it, then that allows me to uh, get a little bit of a kickback so that I can continue buying uh, PDFs to keep on reviewing on the channel. So you all have a great day. Take care.